Good day, David. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. For our audience, could you please uh, introduce yourself and give us a brief background of your experiences in the L&D world? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so first of all, thanks for inviting me on, Guy. Um, I am a, a veteran of uh, of twenty odd years in learning and development. I'd say the uh, I, I cut my teeth and uh, and and where I learned about learning and development was in house. I was uh, I was eight years at Disney. I was director of learning talent and organizational development for the head the European headquarters uh, based in London. Um, before I took over the European role, I led the UK learning and development team there. Um, it was as uh, uh, as exciting and challenging as you would expect of uh, of, uh, of Disney, and certainly during a period of uh, of, of enormous disruption. And uh, and I think I'm I'm underplaying the word disruption rather than over overplaying it there with uh, with so much going on between 2006 and 2014. Um, uh, previous roles, I was in traditional training and development roles, really for Lehman Brothers, for for Lloyd's. Uh, and for NatWest uh, in uh, in the UK, but uh, but I jumped over to the vendor side in uh, in 2014, um, recognizing and experiencing some frustration in my own roles that technology wasn't actually helping in learning and development. Um, being in the roles that I had been and realizing now looking back, I'm, I wasn't on my own. That. Um, I was hamstrung by technology. I spent my time trying to drive traffic towards platforms and content that people didn't want. They didn't see the value in. And when you are having to do so much work manually and face to face because your technology doesn't work, but you are spending an inordinate amount of time trying to justify the expenditure of, uh, of said technology, you realize something's wrong because in so many other facets of our daily lives, technology is making things easier. And I wanted to, I wanted to write that wrong guy. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for that background here. So now on to our main event. We're here today to talk about loop. Mm. So what the heck is a loop? What, <laughs> please. Well, that's a that's a good question. Loop is the the technology I wish I'd had for so many years. Um, the in essence. Um, you know, it's a, it's got the administrative power on the back end um, of a of a next gen LMS, but it's got the content in and uh, other technology integrations as well as the the UX up front of an LXP. But the secret source to it is that it's performance focused, not learning focused. Now we do all we do all the stuff. No one's no one's knocking on our door and saying, "Hey, can we look at your performance platform?" They're looking. They're coming over and saying. Our LMS, our LMS license is up for, for renewal, or we're looking at a new LXP for which we'll say, hey, come and take a look at Loop. But once we've got them looking, we talk the language of, this is gonna help you to do the things in your organization that your people want and need it to do. That's your employees who are, who are struggling with, uh, with change and adaptation um, and transition, and your leaders who need to see different levels of performance and uh, a different way of uh, of delivering results, so that's that's how we get in. So, so yeah, we are we are the uh, the wolf in sheep's clothing um, in the positive way. Maybe we're the sheep in wolf's clothing uh, that uh, that that we are we are what people are looking for. But then we show them another way, and they realise that without the the gimmicks of say an LXP that we've been talking about and raving about saving online learning for the last five or ten years we guarantee engagement that helps to, to impact real results. So how exactly is Loop uh, the same or different from an LMS and the uh, LXPs? Well, first of all, I, I you know, I, I'll call out that all of those, including Loop is a tool. It's not a silver bullet. It's not the solution in the same way as digital marketing isn't isn't powered by one platform. We might say that the HubSpot is a tool, but you wouldn't say that HubSpot is going to save digital marketing because you need skills. Uh, and so we would say that we are a tool that can, um, when utilized correctly, can integrate into into your your HR or your learning suite, your or in some organisations your business suite of tools, uh, and with the right application can help you to make demonstrable difference to what it is that that you are trying to do. Now, we are, we fully advocate the the uh, the development of digital capability within learning and development. Um, 
we can't escape that any longer. Um, we, uh, I, I make it my business to, to bash the mythology around uh, system implementation being the the panacea that uh, that's required when we even at disney when uh, when you know 40 um uh, in 2014 we were about to to replace the uh, the lms and i got out before uh, before that happened i didn't want any more of that nonsense but but but, uh, but we were going through the old rip and replace which which is just take out one system and replace it with another and think that because this thing looks different and it's probably a little bit shinier that it's going to make any demonstrable difference but we blow all that away with uh, with loop the whole thing is that if you if you believe that you can achieve more with technology if you're willing to do the the analysis and i know that that, that you're a huge advocate of that yourself guy you do the analysis up front to understand what the problems are that you're trying to solve we help integrate with the business data to show to uh, to show you where to start in the first place we help you to gain the evidence from the people that you're seeking to influence to know what it is that they are experiencing uh, and what they want to change. And then we help you run digital experiments in a campaign approach to help to nudge people along and give them what they need when they need it. Again, going back to the, the data to find out whether um, what, what you assumed was, the, uh, was wrong in the first place uh, is now moving the needle in the right direction. So it's a, it's, beg stealing and borrowing from from uh, digital professions or, or professions that are ahead of us uh, in their digital journey and bringing that to learning and development uh, in a way that is both uh, accessible and intuitive, but is highly data driven. Can you share with us uh, uh, some of the measurable impact that you guys have had uh, in talking about, you know, in general, not specific to any particular client, but what kinds of improvements and and what was measured? Uh, what what have you seen with your clients? Yeah, sure. So, um, if I talk about what what learning and development are used to um, uh, delivering or being responsible for first, so uh, for for a major brand, we were invited in uh, as a first piece of work to help them with their induction. You've only got to ask the right questions, haven't you, to find out what it's there for? What is it that you're trying to to achieve with said new induction? Uh, and it was um, to help to set a new expectation, to help people pass their probation uh, first time uh, and help them be ready for uh, um, to perform. So, so, so you find out what the metrics are, first of all. So where are we? What's the baseline? Um, let's see whether this is a real problem in the first place and to what extent, what our ground zero looks like. So we get the, uh, the data to show what that is. You get the trend for the last six to 12 months to see whether you've got a temporary blip, whether things are already moving. Uh, but once you've got your, uh, your trend, then you will experiment to see um, with as little as possible what you can do to move the needle and of course we know in digital terms in agile terms that's a minimum viable product uh, so that will be digital resources that will be uh, surfaced at the moment of need integrated with the tools people already use for work so slack or teams um, but then every interaction is taken back into the, the data hub and the analytics uh, in the background um, of loop um, we we recognize that uh, the digital isn't going to be the answer but uh, but my goodness it's a it's a better answer than uh, than trying to uh, deliver a great deal of content to people on their first day or first week and then leaving them to their own devices so um, smart events or, or, or uh, fit for purpose events can be run through or um, uh, coordinated through loop as well, which all come underneath the dashboard. So you've got your business metric at the top, you've got your what it is that you're seeking to achieve, you've got all of your activities, your engagement uh, and attendance uh, within the context of, of an initiative to see whether what is what is being engaged with what people are doing in order to to move the, the data in the right direction. So, uh, so again, really performance focused, but focused on the, the metrics that matter for the organization. But that's not the only thing. I mean, we, we, we do tell, uh, um, we tell, we, uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we strongly encourage our colleagues in, uh, in uh, learning and development roles to focus on the transitions and the periods of adaptation, because you've got genuine concern to capitalize on from the people that you're seeking to influence. So we always say, go where there is already concern it's so much easier to do so than try to generate concern uh, how, many, how many times guy have you been in the uh, in a room full of established middle managers and you're telling them how to do their job differently 
<laughs> it's a hard job. It's a really, really hard job. So, so, so we'll focus on uh, on uh, transitions into management. We'll help organisations as they're going through uh, a period of uh, of change. COVID, for example, you know, um, working. Um, uh, has has been turned upside down. So helping people with the switch to remote working, helping managers with uh, with lead uh, with managing remotely, all of these are great opportunities in order to influence people in the way the work could be done to help them to get either the results that they are expected and rewarded um, to to gain, or uh, in the case of uh, of real transformation, uh, the new results from new ways of working. Uh, so, so yeah, so we, so we'll work on and we'll highly encourage working on transitions, but of course we've got the, the learning element to it as well, where we've got uh, the opportunity to integrate with, uh, with learning content uh, to provide educational stuff as well. But I think the key is in understanding what it is that people are trying to do, helping them to do that better when they actually need the help, where they're actually working uh, and running that as a, as a campaign approach rather than, um, uh, and uh, an educational or one-off um, uh, academic exercise. So you've done this with management, by, but from what you said, what mm. about the individual contributor jobs? What kind of examples can you share with us about uh, those target audiences? Yeah, so, so again, I mean, we've got to think about what appeals to that group. And in anything that we'll work on, uh, it will always start with data. There's got to be a critical point of failure because when you go to people and you say, um, we're going to ask you to do something different within your job. There's got to be a compelling reason. Uh, there's been too much in learning and development about creating uh, either engaging, interactive or, or scenario based content that, that people will engage with. If they engage and they learn and if they learn, they'll perform differently. Bananas. It's total bananas. It's uh, it's mythology that we've made up uh, in order to justify the way that we do things. So it all, all starts, uh, Guy, with, with a critical point of failure within an operation. So either uh, a group of employees aren't hit, uh, hitting a service level agreement, customer satisfaction. Uh, it could be... Um, uh, other levels of uh, of results. It could be it could be widgets. Um, what, whatever it is, there's got to be a critical point of failure. The next part is the evidence uh, element. So if you've got your data to say there's a critical point of failure, that's when we start speaking with the employees to say, hey, look, this thing over here isn't working. What's your experience here? What's the friction that you're experiencing that's stopping you from doing this efficiently and effectively so that you understand that from their perspective? And it doesn't have to be exhaustive. And again, we've got the technology within the, uh, the platform to make that a virtual experience so that if you, again, go in with a, with a minimum valuable product, you'll make an attempt to solve the problem as long as you have a modicum of empathy. That's, that's, that's all we ask of learning and development. It's not about instructional design. It's not, we need you to know this. It's standing in their shoes and saying, hey, they are, they're not able to do this because they don't have this information. There isn't this capability. There's a bottleneck over here. They're not aware of, of X. So you can make an assumption, but as long as you're standing in their shoes. And then we've got a feedback mechanism. The loop of the, uh, the third O of loop is the, uh, is the, the continuous improvement. Uh, we, we want to engage in a conversation with them to ask them, how useful was this in your attempts to do X or, uh, or Y to try and, and talk with them about what they are expected to do and the results that they're expected to gain from that. What we've found is we will always get a, a, a rich amount of data back, which is so much different. And this is where we came from at the beginning. When you ask somebody, what else do you want to learn? Guy, when you ask people that, you, I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's, it's a distraction more than it's anything that uh, that you're uh, that, that's that's going to help. So so we look to engage in a in a uh, in a in a dialogue um, or a conversation with the target audience around what it is that they're trying to do and what they're not able to do uh, effectively. Otherwise, there are um, there are great ways that uh, that our um, digital peers in other um, departments have been working with this with a white wall with a white wall and post-it notes and asking people if you're trying to do that thing that we've got written on the flip chart over there. What is it that's stopping you from doing so? Post-it notes, put this down. Now tell us chrono chronologically when you would have liked this, when it would have been most helpful. And then asking them and really challenging, if we only did 12, if we only did 12 things on this wall, what would be the biggest things that we should focus on in order to move the needle? Again, going with a minimum valuable product rather than trying to boil the ocean. So there, there are all the, those approaches, but, but what it comes down to, and I, I always point out to, uh, to people is, 
there's no secret sauce here. There's nothing, you know, we're not talking about Colonel Sanders' um, uh, secret recipe. And we, we, we haven't got a, a machine that's going to make the McDonald's milkshake here like uh, without putting any of the ingredients in. This takes data. It takes evidence. It takes experimentation. It takes L and D to roll their fingers, uh, their, their their sleeves up, and really believe that with this new skill set, they can transform the way that people work digitally. But it's with a very different approach to we need you to know this, or come and attend this program, or you know, or, or anything else that we might tell ourselves in learning and development. It's by truly understanding the friction that people are experiencing and then surfacing the right stuff at the right time in order to move the needle in a way that's meaningful for, for both that individual and then the organization. It, interest, thank you for that. So you have this software tool. What are the implications to uh, your customers, your, your clients in the L&D in terms of how they have to do business differently? Or do you do the analysis and the development of the content and populate loop? Or do they do that? And do you help them you know, climb that particular learning curve? So um, we've got three different levels. Um, we, we never sell Nirvana uh, because that so few people are there. We don't sell data-driven, um, uh, digital resources. Uh, you know, we, we don't sell the dream, first of all. What we, what we sell is we'll get We'll, we'll either help you to get your content to work harder for you, uh, which is which a lot of places people have come to us and say, hey, we've got X platform and we are looking for something different now. And so, you know, with a conversation of it, it's a it's a content library that they want with integrations and a campaigns engine. You know, our campaigns engine is pretty sophisticated. But what we'll do is we'll show them the dashboard and say, yeah, you, you could do that, but you could also cut your content by different groups. And if you've got groups that are struggling with anything in particular, you could uh, throw up a dashboard and then you could actually see whether you could move the needle in, uh, in any meaningful way. They say, oh, okay, that sounds very interesting. Can we talk to you about induction? And then we're talking to them about induction and we're saying, well, what's the problem with your induction at the moment? And then, you know, and, and so there are certain things that come up, Guy, that we need to just move out the way um, that, that people might say, well, you know, consistency is a big thing for us for our induction. I say, no, it's not really. You know, consistency is an excuse for doing induction the way that you're currently doing it. But it's moving, let's move consistency out of the way for a moment and find out what would happen if you did absolutely nothing on induction? And then people start saying, well, you know, people, people wouldn't know about the, uh, the organization. Okay, so is that a problem? You know, that people would, you know, people wouldn't be ready to perform. People wouldn't be compliant. And then you go, all right, okay, now we get, we really get into the nitty gritty here. So you get to the reasons why you want to do things in the first place and you can start populating dashboards. All of a sudden you've got a compelling reason why you might want to do induction differently. Or, or new manager development or or compliance uh, in the first place but you'll start digging but very soon we'll, we'll we'll just pause and then we'll say to people let's give that a go let's get give that a go and see whether that works and you know what guy and i don't need to tell you this you've been in the game longer than i have when you're solving a real problem that truly affects the way that people are expected to perform and work and it starts delivering better results for them engagement's the least of your worries you're not giving them badges or you're not gamifying. You've not set up a leaderboard in order to get people back into your platform. They're going there because it's valuable. And that, that is the, that's what using the tools uh, is uh, uh, the right, well, the right approaches and, uh, and um, fit for purpose tools is going to help us to gain. But again, it doesn't start with the tool. It doesn't start with a system implementation. It starts with understanding the problems that you're seeking to solve. So, so yeah, so we'll take people onto a journey. Then what we do is we, you know, we plug in the insights as well. So we create that dialogue. All of a sudden, then you're getting um, user feedback back to you, not based on what people are interested in or what they want to learn, but what they're trying to do and what they're not able to do efficiently. And then all of a sudden, you're creating a backlog of these are the new priorities that we've got to do. And then you can or re, you can organize those in terms of uh, the biggest impact that they may have. And then all of a sudden, you've got data informed um, backlog and, and priority list. Then all of a sudden, people are looking and thinking, this is amazing. How do we take this to the next level? Then you take them to Nirvana. So it's, so it's a bit of a journey uh, to get people there. And a lot of people will, will stay at number two and, and really be quite happy. But everybody progresses from number one to number two very, very quickly because the response from the end users and the leaders that, wait a minute, you're making a difference is, is, is palpable. 
Thank you. Thank you for that. I, the reason I wanted to talk to you because I appreciate your performance orientation and quite mm. frankly, so few of us in the field have that performance orientation. And some people talk it, but they don't necessarily walk it. But what I've seen from you is that performance orientation, the use of data about what I would call measured results. Mm. What, what baselines and trends do we have to start with? How do we know this is an issue? Where are we starting from? Can we see what effect we might have on that? I like your uh, minimal viable product approach because too often we flood the zone with a bunch of content and hope mm. and pray that you know something's going to click and work. But uh, but I but I think that's very interesting in your campaigns. Um, rather, you know, you're you're not uh, uh, shoving it all out there at once. It's it's really kind of a drip uh, approach, uh, uh, space learning almost, uh, if you will. But it's but also I like what you just said about you know you're getting feedback from people about what they want to do, yeah, not what they want to know. Mm -hmm. I think that that shift of a mindset that our whole uh, industry, our whole field needs to take is focus on the performance and then figure out what people need to know in order to be able to do to perform. Um, and that, that's very interesting that you're generating a backlog of items that you can then tackle after you've made the assessment of what impact will this have to the business and where should we really start. So um, bravo. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for doing this interview with me today. Is there, is there anything else that, uh, that you'd like to add before we wrap up? Yeah, look, I, the only thing I'd say, Guy, to your audience is there are no shortcuts to this. Learning and development uh, in the UK uh, at the moment, and I can, I can speak because I've got access to the, uh, the skills reports, um, L&D are cited as one of the four major skills gaps uh, in the analysis in a report provided to our government with digital basics, leadership and management and STEM. The ability to teach and train and actually close these skills gaps has been uh, highlighted as a major concern. The reason is, is that we, will, we are continuing to do what we've always done and plugging and, and implementing systems and thinking that we are going to address a skills gap without understanding what the skills gaps are and what it is that people are trying to do is, is, is a fool's game. And I think that we need, we need to wise up to this and there are no shortcuts to developing our digital capability in order to do so. So I, look, I don't wish to be alarmist on that. I like to encourage our, our profession to do this. It is really exciting. And instead of standing at the front of a room and wondering whether you're making an impact, you're, stand, you're, you're looking at a dashboard and looking at the impact that you're actually making. And that is a, that is a great deal more fulfilling. So I just wanna encourage people to, to take the mantle because where we're going is incredibly exciting. Yes, thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing with us uh, all of this with us today. I'm I'm going to put the appropriate uh, links to Loop into the show notes here for the YouTube video for those people who would like to follow up. And I'd also like to mention that you have a podcast that you do. Uh, in full disclosure, here you and I did one of these uh, sometime last year, I think. And uh, but uh, uh, it's a it's a good series of people in the business. Uh, and you talk with them about a performance orientation, which, of course, I love. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, David, for uh, sharing with us today. And uh, I wish you well uh, going forward. Thanks. Thanks, Guy. Bye-bye.